Hello all, welcome back to software testing course. So in the last class, we had uh, started with the types of testing and we had seen smoke testing, black box and white box and about interface testing. So today we will get started with the use case testing. So in your use case testing, various use cases are worked out. So we already know what is use cases, right? So the exact sequence of operation done by the user is worked out and the testing is done in the same sequence to check whether the desired outputs or the results are obtained. Say for uh, example, you have a database application, right? Something like this one. This is the GUI, right? So the GUI, this GUI is for entering the employee details, okay? Like uh, what is uh, the employee number, name, salary designation, everything, okay? So the user enters the data of the new employee who has joined and at the end of the month, he takes the printout of the employee all the employee details like whatever is mentioned on the screen salary designation name and his employee number right so the testing is done in the same fashion like enter what you do first enter the details of your employees add the employee details and then take out the printout check whether the correct data is printed or not so if the employee makes some mistake he will click on the modify button okay so here is the modify button which is quite not visible so he, uh, if he, uh, the whoever, whoever is entering the data, if he makes some mistakes, he will click on the modify button. Okay. So that will allow us to modify the data and the report is checked again. So the use case can be worked out for adding the employee details, modifying existing record and deleting a record. So in addition to the use case testing, the testing of each GUI has to be done from other aspects such as your whether each uh, form has a title like this. This here you can see form 1 right. So it has to be proper name. Okay. So whether the form has the title, whether each field is validated. Say for example, um, employee name, what does it take? Alphanumeric characters or only alphabetic characters, then employee number, what is the length of it? These all things apart from whatever you enter and you check, even you have to check for all these details. Okay. So this is about your GUI, uh, sorry, use case testing. So the next one is Gorilla testing. Okay. So this Gorilla testing is also called as monkey testing or chimpanzee testing. Okay. So it is also commonly referred as random testing as the name suggests it is random whatever you type in you test it right so so imagine you give uh, whatever the software you have developed right you give it to the gorilla for testing actual gorilla for testing what the gorilla will do by looking at your computer or the laptop so it will just uh, say for example it will randomly type some keys right it will randomly press some keys which may be relevant for the you know software which may not be uh, relevant so whenever the gorilla presses some keys right random keys it may sometimes press the keys that are acceptable inputs and sometimes it may press the keys which are not acceptable inputs so this type of testing which is random testing it might bring out the defects when the wrong input is given so the software should not misbehave when the wrong inputs are given if the software fails then the user will lose his confidence on the software, right? So this Gorilla testing is used to check whether the defensive programming has been done or not. That means you are, if you have defensive programming, like for uh, wrong inputs also, you have to get proper messages. So through defensive programming, software is more tolerable to wrong inputs. So uh, this Gorilla testing, it is difficult. You know, it is quite difficult. Why? Because you cannot recruit a Gorilla for testing. So what you have to do is like, you have to act as a gorilla and do the testing. That means randomly give inputs and test for the outputs, which is simple, right? You uh, keep pressing some keys randomly on the keyboard and check whether the software fails, whether the machine will hang or, you know, it would, your software would crash, something like this. So if the wrong input is given, necessary error messages have to be displayed. If the system hangs or crashes, that means it is a major defect. If the error messages are not properly displayed, so the error handling routines need to be improved in this case. So this Gorilla testing, it is highly beneficial for testing your games, game software. So when a child gets lost while playing a game, right? 
what it does it simply presses lots of keys on the joystick or on the keyboard right so if the software hangs then it is really a bad software so the gorilla testing in this case it simulates the child's action so for every product uh, this gorilla testing has to be done without fail so any software packages that passes the gorilla testing can be considered as a high quality software product fine so the next one is your alpha testing so when the software it reaches some mature stage of development that mean that means it will have defects but you can use the software at some extent so then it will be highly beneficial to get the feedback from the end users of the software okay so what will be done is like here so whatever you have developed we know it would have bugs but it it is of you know you can do some perform you know you can do some actions on that you can uh, say suppose you can um, have some functionalities to be tested on that so what will happen here is like whatever the working software is there it would be given to your client or the client person. they will test whatever you have built and they will give you the feedback on the functionality so this is the early feedback what you are getting from your clients right so this early feedback it will reduce a lot of work at the later stage so the end users can test the software in the presence of your development team so the user can be guided how to use the software and the developers can rectify any you know problems suppose there are minor problems they can rectify then and there and if there are any major problems that also they can make a note of it okay so this type of testing we call them at uh, we call that as alpha testing so it is always advisable to carry alpha testing for every project because it will help in getting your early feedback from the user or the client so this alpha testing is carried out by the users in the presence of your developers or the development team okay next we will talk about beta testing so this beta testing is carried out at the user premises in the absence of the development team so here users means the actual end users say uh, for example you might be knowing uh, you know whatsapp beta version will come so you will be if you apply for that beta uh, testing you can do some testing of the new feature whatever they have released okay say uh, for example and the example is like uh, facebook beta version okay so the aim of this beta testing is to you know find out the problems that are associated with the performance or the usability so during the test plan uh, formulation or creation so we need to keep in mind some aspects we need to decide on some aspects so there are six aspects what we are what we need to decide on do, while doing the beta testing so the first one is the number of beta test sites so this means the number of a number this depends on the type of the product say for example if you have generic product which has to be released to the market at a very large scale so this large number of test sites are required to test the software under different environments like your operating systems again users with a different cultural backgrounds like that so if it is not uh, it, it is not surprising that for windows 95 there were about 4 lakh beta test sites so sometimes a limited beta testing is carried out with a small number of sites and then frequently more sites are added to that so the second aspect is the environment required for the beta testing this means the exact hardware and the software configuration required need to be specified so while carrying out the beta testing the actual where you know the environment wherein your actual software runs the same has to be provided for the beta testing users so the third one is your support services to be provided so during this beta testing if the users they encounter some problems so they need to be provided with a helpline the support mechanism needs to be worked out and it has to be specified next one whether the beta test software is priced or free so if the beta testing is done on a reasonably mature product it can be priced okay otherwise uh, at lower price then the price of the end product can also be given the next one is defect reporting mechanism so when while doing your beta testing suppose a user if he finds a defect okay uh, he should be provided with some mechanism so that the defects can be fixed or before that the uh, defects whatever the user finds can be maintained in some repository so that later once the beta testing is done uh, you know the actual development team can fix those defects one way like one is like 
specification of the defect another what you can do is like uh, you can give a feedback report periodically and then send it to the customer support center okay another possibility is like inform periodically that means whenever a defect is found you can give a consolidated report to the at the end of the test period so this can be done so last one is beta testing period so this testing period has to be fixed depending upon the complexity of the product like from it may be two weeks of beta testing or two months up to like two weeks to two months okay so this beta testing some organization what they do is like they announce a reward scheme like if the user uh, whatever he is doing a beta testing he reports a defect that particular user will be given a small reward right so why this reward has to be given why because it creates good motivation to the beta test site users but we have to be careful if the product is uh, you know it is not very major your organization may go bankrupt with this reward scheme okay so the next type of testing we will be studying is field trial or operational testing so some software products have to be tested in the real working environment before releasing them to the client for the operational use so this field trial it facilitates testing the software in the actual working environment that means the field trial is similar to your beta testing it is normally conducted on a customized software say for example suppose your organization has developed a messaging software that works over a satellite network something like this one okay so how do you test this one right so during the development time you would have tested the software in the lab by simulating a satellite network but before making the software available to your users on the satellite network you would like to conduct a field trial by installing the software on the satellite network and testing it through a group of selected users so once you ascertain the that the software is working fine once you have the confidence that the software is working fine it can be then released for your operational use so before conducting the field trial the test team has to make a detailed report on the requirements of the requirements at the field so your project team has to prepare the hardware and the software requirements for conducting this field trial testing again a format of the field trial report it has to be given so that it has to be filled after your field trial testing you have to maintain a log sheet that gives all the problems encountered during the field trial so that has to be maintained with the details so the details such as the date the preconditions that is the status of the software before the problem description of the problem then what is the post condition that is whenever the problem arrived how your software has you know reacted the impact of the problem so these all things has to be kept in the log sheet so the field trial duration has to be defined uh, decided or defined at the planning stage itself okay so during the field trial development team member has to be available at least on the telephone or email for the support activities so based on the field trial report all the defects have to be removed and then the software can be released that's it for today we'll conclude our session thank you